Howdy you guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video on this boy right here is 400. This is very mild built 400 big block Mopar. Very mild, this is a wimpy motor. But I wanna do 400 against 400. This is a 400 Mopar big block. That is a 400 Pontiac engine. It's actually a 408. But I wanna see budget next to nothing in this. Lots of money invested in time. So I want to run that truck against Dad's Skylark and see which one eats the other one. So hope you guys enjoy. It's just a bunch of just random clips and things and stuff. So hope you guys enjoy. Budget Pontiac engine coming soon. I want to show you our budget Pontiac. Budget Mopar engine coming soon. all righty guys here is the exact canvas in this engine it is nothing special it is very small it is very wimpy um here's the part number it's outer brock cam there's your lift there's your okay but the reason I bought this is because this came as a kit. It came with some springs, which I just went ahead and used the cam, the timing chain, the lifters, but he, the guy didn't know that you had to keep those in order. So I bought lifters. So the next time you guys are going to see this is when we're putting the bottom end rotating assembly together on, on live stream from my laptop here. We'll figure it out. We'll find a day and we'll let you guys know ahead of time so you guys can tune in for this. Again, keep in mind, me and dad are idiots, so if we fuck up on camera, we fuck up. We're, we're human and we're idiots. We're not experts. We don't do this shit. Well, we do this all the time, but we're fucking idiots. We still fuck up. We're not smart. We, we're just average people in our garage. So stay tuned. See you guys next time. All right, you guys, so I'm getting ready to lap these valves in. I mark one cylinder for one. You know, it's probably number one on the engine block. One, 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 so you can match it all up. Just go on sewing through. You put a lapping gun pedal on it. You can put a drill on this. They say I like doing it the hand method, you know. So bring those back when it's lapped in. All right, you guys, some of these holes have like a little bit of gunk in them, so the holes. I like using these little, ri I call them rifle brushes because that's what I've used my whole life to clean guns and rifles and pistols and so on. They're just, they just, these little brushes. Usually a rifle brush is a lot longer. So I call them a rifle brush. They call them an engine brush. Same principle, same thing. But basically I'm just gonna try to find one that fits this hole. And all it's gonna do is clean them threads to where you can see them again. Cause it's got a bunch of gunk in some of these. There was still a bunch of old gasket on this from when we popped the original valve covers off of it. The head's still gonna need a really good cleaning, but it's getting there. And again, here's the casting number if anybody wants to run it. I'm gonna grab my, my pin light so you guys can see. It looks like it's 4006452 casting number. All right, you guys, we're at the point where we're gonna start assembling his heads. That's actually all the spray that I've used off of these to clean these. You got these little valve, these are your, your valve seals. They, they come in a package like this usually. So there are things and they just push over things. These are factory ones. Some of them you have to have like a little, you use a socket, but some of them have to be installed. You might have to cut this down depending on lift and all that crap. But stock stuff, you don't have to do that. So I'm, I'm gonna, Bring you guys back when I've got valve springs on. Alrighty, guys, I gotta repaint this head, but head's assembled. 
clean. So I gotta repaint the head though, like I said. Oh yeah. Sorry you guys, I wanted to show you guys this. This thing right here is in a crossover. But I think it's your exhaust crossover, but look how much black shit came out of that, that other head right there. Now look how much shit's coming probably gonna come out of this head. This thing was plugged full. Now this on a performance car will get capped over. They have like little plugs you put in there. You can weld them up, but just a plug just in case somebody ever gets these heads and wants to redo them. I'll run a drill through here. I want to clean that up as best as possible because, well, you're here. And I want that plug to fit nice in there. I don't want it to be, you know, you want that plug to fit nice in there. That's my point of cleaning it up. Plus, I hate grease. I hate carbon, which is what I think that is. I think it's more carbon than grease. So, I'm going to get the busting down head number two. Now, I'm pretty sure... Now, I'm pretty sure that these heads are just small heads. I'm pretty sure they're just 1976 chunk. But, I don't know for sure. So, if somebody wants to run numbers on it, let me know. I'm assuming they're small junk. So, they're probably not going to make a ton of power. If we ever do upgrade this engine like I plan to, we'll get some, like, Speedmaster aluminum heads or something for it. And, uh, in the future, all the ports... Like, I'm pretty sure you can probably do some of these heads. Now, if somebody's a Mopar expert and knows that casting number I just shown and knows if it's any good, drop down in the comments, I'd like to know. Um, it was, I don't know. I would imagine, yeah, look. Just a pile of burnt carbon on there. Now I'm gonna run through the water. Something I like to do is, like I said, get you what I call a rifle brush, which is that right there. Some are freight to call them engine brushes at Harbor Freight, but I've been around guns my whole life. My grandpa started me on cleaning guns when I was like seven, eight. So, we call them rifle brushes, is what we call them. And that's technically what I call that, is a rifle brush. But they call them an engine brush, Arbor Freight. Comes in a kit. You can buy them in varying lengths. I like the short ones you can put on a drill. And then I like to run through each thread hole, wherever you're going to have a, have a bolt in it. I like to clean those threads out. That way, when you're assembling the engine, everything goes together smooth. You don't cross thread anything. You don't get some dirt in the threads. And, yeah, bad things happen. Also, run it through every coolant passage of your engine. I don't care so much if the engine's brand new, freshly from machine shop, especially then. Like that one right there, that 400 Pontiac, we ran through the oil galleys and the uh, coolant passages because the shit they use to, to bore them blocks is very abrasive, and you wanna get all that out of the block. Um, bad things happen if abrasive compounds get in your oil. Keep in mind your oil, ew, that's on the screen. Your oil is what circulates through these things and makes all these parts work harmoniously. So if you have anything like valve lapping compound, uh, any kind of abrasive compound in the shit, it's just gonna eat your engine alive. So clean is the best thing to do. I know it looks like I'm working on dirty, which I am a dirty pull born, but you can still be clean doing this. Just make sure your parts are clean. Like I have a bat of brake fluid here with a brush. And I'm gonna go through everything as clean, make it as clean as I can, just in case. Now that engine, I'm a lot more. Okay. My fingers in the way. That engine, I'm a lot more careful with because everything on it's brand new. I don't want to ruin a thousand dollar engine, which it's more than that because you figure the block, the engine when we pulled it from junkyard, the engine ran. It just had a lot, a lot of miles on it, and some asshole fucked up the heads when they drilled it in the car and just drilled right through into a water pass. Yes. I am dirty, I know. I've been out here working, my hands are dirty from all this freaking valve lapping compound and just, I hate grease, like my hands are greasy right now. This just makes me, ugh, I don't like it. I don't have gloves to put on. Plus my gloves, I probably wouldn't do it. But um, the key word is here, make sure as much of your engine is clean. Um, run through the oil passages if you feel like putting new freeze plugs in, which is probably a good idea. I am not going to do that at all. I'm not going to run through the coolant passages on this engine. Because here's why. This engine is a low buck engine. The build's low buck. And I want to save every penny I can. Now, is it the right thing to do? No. Not at all. Now, will this bite me in the ass? Probably. But it'll get the engine done. And if I have to do this later on the road, we will replace freeze plugs. Same with the flat tappet cam. Will that bite me in the ass? Probably will I be at the Mopar swap meet Indy probably looking for a big block cam and roller lifters? Probably, 
but you gotta try it at least once and if i fell at it i fell out and you guys can laugh at me but i want to do it at least once and then this type of stuff's going out i mean engines nowadays have hydraulic rollers in them this flat tappet stuff's going out of style i want to do it at least once and try it and if it works hey it works if it don't it don't i've seen guys on here um oh what's his name i can't think of his name he runs a shop in canada not dd speed shop uh nick from nick's garage i think if i remember right he fills his engines a little bit more with oil when he breaks them in i'm gonna have to go back and make sure and if not i'll edit this out but i think that he says that he adds extra oil to it like a quarter or two and he soaks the lifters now a lot of people say you don't need to soak your lifters here's the deal you are messing with a flat tapping engine these things are notorious for going bad for wiping out so even though it's you don't really need to you probably should do it to give your engine every bit of chance to live and that's what i want every bit of chance to live there's something called a zddp additive which we'll have to buy and put in both these engines because they both are flat tappets roller cams you don't need that zddp is an ingredient that they took out of oil for cadillac converters they took that zddp out of oil because it was fucking with Cadillac Converters when they came out. So, it wasn't to make it cheaper or for some people set. Google it. It was because of Cadillac Converters. It was fucking up your Cadillac Converters on these cars when they came out with Cadillac Converters. So that's why they took it out. You have to add it back into these engines to help that, that flat tap at cam live. These engines need that stuff. Now, some people I've heard on here say, oh, you don't need to do that stuff. You don't need to like soak your lifters. ZDDP was was for, so the industry, the oil industry should get off cheaper. Well, here's the thing with that. How are they getting off cheaper when it's naturally found in oil and they have to take it out of said oil? How are they getting off cheaper? They're have to spend more time pulling it out of the oil than they are just throwing it in a barrel and being done so people that say that their logic is kind of flawed because again how are they getting off cheaper and if somebody knows in the comments how they get off cheaper drop it down there because i'd like to hear your guys' opinion on that so we're gonna give this thing every chance we can to live yeah he fired me jokes on him he can't do shit without me so keep me alive son would you say I'm the best son in the world? Alright, you guys. So what I've done is I'm just cleaning up in here. You know, all the burnt grease and shit out of them. All the rust and all that out of there. So, yeah, that we can get ready to lap them. Sorry, you guys. I'm going to soak these, these lifters here for our 400 big block. I'm actually going to let these soak for probably a couple of days. Make sure everything primes up you probably don't have to do this i know a lot of people say you don't but i want to do it just to make sure everything's okay because some people say you don't some people say you should and i'm just gonna be safe with it so i put some oil in a in a paint cup put lifters in a paint cup and put the oil in it and i'm gonna go set this somewhere where it's not gonna spill and we're gonna let it sit for a couple days so these things can prime up and hopefully not wipe each other out so check this out you guys somebody along the lines along the times I stamped this block 6.6, six, which is 6.6 .6 liters, which is what I'm assuming that means, which means, well, 400. It's a 6.6 .6 liter engine. So I'm pretty sure what that means. Or this block, well, it couldn't have been that. Sometimes when you send things out of machine shops, machine shops stamp their work, like if they work on a block, but this block has never been machined. This block's standard. So it makes you wonder if the factory did that or what. It's kind of odd. And it's got a bunch of rough numbers in here i don't know how you guys can see that looks like ae 4a 4c 2c and 1f is what that one says well we're idiots you guys i didn't think to look down these coolant passages so we're gonna have to flush this block look good thing i looked in and down in this before we assembled it that needs to be flushed so well, I've been busy working all the time, so it's pretty bad. So I'm gonna 
yeah, this is buy freeze plugs and flush this out with power washer and just free clean up the boards after we're done. Yeah, she definitely would have ran huh? That's for sure. This one coolant passage here, this one here, was plugged almost solid. So, yeah. Howdy, you guys. Welcome back to Fort Man's Tech Shop. Um, this video is just a bunch of random stuff on this big block. All right now, I'm getting ready to yeah, cylinder number one. This in ring. I'm not going to bore you with the rest. That would be a long video. This video is already going to just going to be a collaboration of just junk. This video, with this season, we will be building on a live here in I don't know when. I'll do a short with a caption live stream time and date when we put this together. I like that you guys know some probably this red stuff in these so This is actually bearing grease, high coat. Like I pressure washed this side to get all this stuff out, and I already honed these cylinders. So I use bearing grease if I'm going to store an engine that's on a block. Or even an engine. So the bearing grease there protects everything. And I haven't had no rust pop through. Is it the right way? No. Is it the poor man's speed shop way? Yes. Do it that as you will. We are not experts. This is for entertainment, you know. If it fucks up and it doesn't work, then hey, we fix it. Alrighty, you guys. So I just did this ring here. It is, we're going between 18 and 23. I think that's what everybody says online to do. So I'm gonna put this on number one. It says if it has a dot, that the dot faces up. If the paper says if the dot, it don't have a dot, it can go either way. So. And I wanna point something out. Most people, well, I tore, we tore apart an engine once and this was like this, but I wanna educate you. See this little notch right here? Little cutout right there? Sometimes I have a dot, sometimes I have an arrow, sometimes I have a knot, sometimes, all different times. Anything that's stamped in the piston, like a dot or a notch or an arrow, always faces the front of the engine. Always. Front. Doesn't matter what side it is. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Do this. So... I'm not gonna bore you guys, I'll do the next one. And if then we have to do some grinding, I'll tell you. But other than that, what I do is I take the ring, put it in the cylinder, like so. They still have fancy tool to do this, like a really fancy tool. But when you're putting a head gasket on a YZ, don't forget to grease your rubbers. Don't forget to grease your rubbers when you're putting on YZ rubbers. Oh, on Alright, so what I do is I use the piston to straighten everything up. Like so. And then you grab your, your filler gauges. We have one that's apart. Grab your filler gauges. Go in between. And if it's too tight of a tolerance, grind it. So whatever they say, so it fits. Because you want your gap to fit. You want your your long thing to fit in your gap. So I'll bring us back where we're putting the second ring in. All right, you guys. So we're going to install this ring. Top ring. So here's what I do. I like using this handy dandy tool. Don't spread it too far. You'll break them. Dad actually likes rolling them on by hand. It's all preference. Come on. Yeah, just like so. Now we'll go to the second one. And then when you uh hell it pause it. When you install rings, you clock them. So you put one here. You want the opposite one to face the opposite way. Same as your oil rings. You want the gaps facing different directions. That way the combustion thingies don't leak out the thingies and cause bad things to happen. I just realized something, you guys. Don't do what I just did. I have to use that damn piston to fucking line up the other fucking ring. 
God, I'm an idiot. See what I mean? Don't do it. We just did. See what I did? I'm supposed to be a mechanic. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're hacks. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. Alright, we got back. We're doing the second. Second ring. Alright, Frank is in there. This car. Line it up. You're going to grab your filler gauges. You're going to fill the situation out. Get it. Filler. Fill the situation out. Filler gauge. Fill the situation out. Hey, bud, can you stop? You have two seconds. I don't matter if you're video, but uh, you think you can use your perfect eyes because I'm buying the channel. Make sure I got these rings on right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Had to step away and help dad. Yeah. 18, I got 18 on my hand. Eighteen thousand fits in there. Let's go up. Button over right, and this is a twenty thousand. Over. Twenty thousand fits. Let's see here. Twenty one thousand. Yep, that's right. Inspect. Really, anything from 18 to 23 would be in spec from what the, I'm understanding them, right? That one is just a smidge over 18. Howdy, poor man, speed shop fam. I wanted to tell you guys something. Um, don't think for one second that this is going to be a quick process. This is going to be a pain in the ass process. It takes serious time. And if you're doing it, you might as well sit down and put some music on or tv on like i got going in the background and just jam out and do it you're gonna spend you know at most maybe 30 40 50 minutes on it if you're really good and there's a couple people going maybe not that long but i'm kind of new to gap and rings so it takes me a little bit of while to do it just like it takes the rest of you guys to do it um right here i fumble a little bit and I'm still getting used to the camera even three years later so i hope you guys are enjoying the video um I'm showing you right here it has a dot. That dot always goes up no matter what. Always put that dot up. Otherwise, the bad things happen. Um, but, yeah, I just hope you guys enjoy the video. See you guys at, here in a minute when I get back to talking. So... Dots facing up. Basically, what that does is just bend it around and do that number. I have a dot, so it goes actually. Upon further inspection, again, I'm an idiot. It's got a dot, I think. So I'm going to put what looks like a dot up. And if it's not a dot, well, then it don't hurt. If it is a dot, it would have hurt. So. Now, so you got, show you guys something. See, see this right here? Spin it, clock them. I got one here, one here. That's what you want. Now I'm gonna put the O-ring on, piston done. Now I'll put the O-ring on. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Now I'm gonna put that one right in the middle of the skirt right there. I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna put that in the middle. Hang on a minute. Sometimes they're a pain in the ass to do. How well I'm showing. Not very good with showing stuff on camera like this with my the ones in my hand. This is a chick or a beginner's car. Somebody like him that's supposed to be right should have more experience to have something like else. A real, he talks about it like it's a YFZ 450 or a fucking 
Put your this ring in first, then this ring here. I did on that one, not. And you're gonna put this ring on top. What the fuck's up with your arms, Barry? Why do you have all these scabs on your body? Are you going to net or something? Are you a picker? And what I do is. I spin this ring to where it's completely the opposite way of the other. So. And that's one piston done. I don't worry you guys the rest of them. Simple shit. Simple, even a 15 year old can do it. Alrighty guys, I left this in here just to show you guys that I'm human, I make mistakes, I'm like everybody else. Um, I went to my local auto parts for this was ordered me uh, Mopar 400. Freeze plugs, turns out they ordered me the wrong ones, these are for a Buick. And you see I struggle for a minute because it shouldn't be that damn hard to get it to seat in the hole. And I start looking around thinking maybe there's, because you usually have different sizes freeze plugs. And this one you do too, but... Uh, long story short, this is one of the reasons why I don't like using AutoZone. Because the young kids at AutoZone don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. You even tell them, you know, Plymouth Fury, which is what this car came out of. And somehow they misconstrued Fury for something that a, I guess a Buick would add. Because there's no way they fit. I struggled for a good, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes to get a seat in there. And. They should not be this difficult to put in. They should just kind of slide in. And you really want to put sealant on them. I, I I don't, but you should put sealant on the outside of the freeze plug. Some people say you don't. Some people say you do. It's all a matter of opinion. I probably would. I don't have any. That's why I wasn't going to. Um, and my impatient ass couldn't wait to do this. I'm really only holding off to putting the bottom rotating assembly in because I know a lot of you guys want to see a live stream of it and I think that'd be cool to do but I really just I need to fiddle with it I got tired of it just standing in the corner collecting dust and I really want to get that truck done so I can focus on Gramps the 1963 Plymouth Valiant V200 I need this engine out of the way and back in that truck so that way I can get Gramps' engine in here and start ordering parts for it and getting it assembled so yeah, I fiddle far around with this for a good 15 minutes, you guys. Laugh at me. I'm an idiot. You think by now I would know that, hey, this is not the way it goes. But, hey, this is part of car building. You know, you, you expect the guy to get you the right parts. And, yeah, they didn't. We usually use O'Reilly's, and I think that's probably where I'm going to go next to see if they can get them. Because I know I can at least, they're, they got some guys there that are actually knowledgeable. AutoZone around here, kids don't know what the fuck they're doing or talking about. So, I don't know. I feel far around with this, Jesus Christ. I'm going to cut this short, you guys. But, yeah, this just shows that we're human. We're all stupid. I'm trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. I'd rather be fucking, I'd rather be fucking Captain Hook than Barry. All right, you guys. So, those, <laughs> those fucking freeze plugs, can't make us up, are for a... Fucking Buick. So they're not gonna work in there. I gotta take back the parts for, but we are gonna install this beauty here. This is the Elder Brock. Very small, very weak cam. Yeah. 
Now this is a flat cabinet, so you want to make sure it's well lubed. Because when this ain't well lubed, you're going to have a very sore day. All right, you guys, cam's installed, lubed up. So we're gonna call it for now, bring you guys back. Well, next time you guys are actually gonna see this engine, we'll be on the live stream or we're putting it together. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna end this video here. This video is just a hodgepodge of shit that you guys can see before the live stream goes with this engine. So I don't know when exactly we'll do a live stream, I'll do a short for the date and the time letting you guys know so you guys can tune in hopefully you guys enjoyed so far it's done it's getting ready to be stuck in the car and then i can get gramps and slant six in here and start building that out i know slant six tons of you want to watch that dad is thrilled to be building a slant six like that's his favorite engine of all time